Assalamu alaikum. So there's a lot of doom and gloom in the market lately and I just wanted to share with you a perspective that I heard on uh, CNBC which I think brings some valid points and paints a less gloomy picture than perhaps a lot of people may have in their minds with regards to the prospects of the markets. I'll be providing my commentary on this clip so let's jump right in. Under pressure again today, the Nasdaq now down nearly 23% this year. Our next guest, though, is betting on a turnaround coming as we head into the back half of the year. Joining us now is Tom Lee. He is the head of research at Fundstrat, of course, is CNBC. Keep in mind here, for those who don't know Tom Lee, he's known as a permable, someone who's always bullish on the market. So something to keep in mind when you hear his opinion. But I do respect his outlook. He has good calls in his record. And he does bring facts to back up his opinions. It's not just a reflection of his mood at the time. He actually bases his opinions on data. So I do have respect for him as an analyst. See contributor as well. And he made his way to post nine. It's good to see you. Great to see you. You said I'm feeling better about this market. And why are you feeling better? Because there are a lot of issues out there, Tom. That's right. Uh, I know the Fed's got a tough job, and I think all of our clients are just watching inflation prints and nervous about Friday. But it looks like a lot of things are happening. Friday is when the inflation numbers come out, in case you're wondering why people are nervous about Friday. Around the economy and the world that are helping the Fed. And I think one of those is that I think there's a lot of goods that are going to start seeing discounts, both cars and apparel, furniture, everything Target and Walmart have. And now I think housing is cooling. So that's an important point. Something noteworthy from the headlines of this week is that Target has a stockpile of inventory that doesn't know what to do with. It has to actually sell before the holiday season in the United States. The reason for this is that people during the pandemic were buying a lot of appliances and clothing and things that they needed in the house. And post-pandemic, people have switched away from that and demand has fallen for these types of items. And Target, which is a major retailer in the United States, for those who are unfamiliar with Target, overestimated the demand that it was going to have for these types of products and underestimated the speed with which consumers would switch back to pre-pandemic spending habits and leave the spending habits of the pandemic times wherein they were buying a lot of beddings and clothing and kitchen appliances. And so this switch in consumer behavior caught Target off guard. Now they have a big stockpile of inventory they don't know what to do with. And they're starting to slash prices on that inventory in order to sell it through. And Walmart is in the same position. So if you're in need of a toaster, you should probably check out Target. They may have something on sale. But the implications, the broader implications, because Target and Walmart, big major retailers in the United States have this glut of inventory, people are expecting that. And in fact, this is happening. These retailers are slashing the prices of these items, which is basically working counter to inflation. So inflation is when prices go up, but this issue is bringing prices down for a lot of items that people need. So if the Fed in the United States feels like inflation is under control, it's likely going to be less aggressive with raising interest rates, which is good for the economy and the stock market. Pretty dramatically, and that's going to lead to both job loss and some wealth effect. And so I think the Fed has the market doing its work for it, which means investors don't have to worry about hawkish surprises. Still sticking to your choppy now but strong second half of the year and we can reach some levels that look at times unattainable to be frank yeah that's right i think a lot of folks think hey look the s p won't see 4800 again for five years but we have to realize there's some bullish bullish themes really coming together one is the labor market is creating wage pressures and that's solved with technology and automation that so believe it or not at least in the united states employers are finding it hard to convince people to work for them and this is good for technology stocks because when companies can't find people to hire, it has to substitute technology solutions 
in place of the people it wanted to hire, and this bodes well for technology companies. That's great for tech. I think eventually the war ends with Russia and Ukraine, and then we have a post-construction build and commodity prices fall. That's really good for U.S. companies. And... And by the way, if you're wondering about the employment situation in the United States in numbers, you can see the unemployment rate seasonally adjusted May 2019 to May 2022. You can see that we're now, May 2022, we're at the levels we were in May 2019. So we've reverted back to pre-pandemic levels, which is quite good. Now that stocks have come in, tech is cheaper than it was in 2003 after the dot com. And there's been a that's a pretty profound statement. I'd like to see how he's actually measuring that, how he's measuring tech is as cheap as it was in 2003 after the dot com bubble burst. A real loss of faith in owning some of these names that are important. So I think there's a lot of upside surprise. You don't have any concerns whatsoever about Oil pushing towards 130, nat gas pushing towards ten dollars. We can stop there, but then I would continue yeah. and say the very stocks that you like so much, these large cap technology stocks, earnings are I feel like suddenly in question. Microsoft told you what they did. They're now concerns about what Apple might deliver as a result of the services business. Intel, not that they're in the same ballpark obviously as Microsoft and Apple, but you catch my drift. Yeah, I do. Nobody wants earnings cuts. I think that feels like another down for folks. I think that the surge in oil is almost a barometer of the progress of the war. So I think as long as there's war, the OECD had a great report today showing that half of the inflation surge this year is really war related. And once the war comes to a conclusion, I think we see oil and food prices really start to disinflate. But it's That's a big statement right there. If half of the inflation is in fact war related, if that's true, that's a really profound statement that has some pretty large implications because this means that when the war ends, there's going to be a lot of help for the inflation picture around the world. It's painful now. I, I don't think that means tech has downside. You know, if we have And by the way, I don't think now a lot of people are assuming that this war is going to be extremely long fought. But I actually think that it may not last that long. And the reason why I say this is because Russia's burn rate, to use a financial term, Russia's burn rate is just unsustainable for Russia. If you look at their loss in terms of troops, Zelensky was saying today that they are losing around 300 soldiers per day. And when you look at the economic impact that this war has had on Russia's economy and Russia's treasury and the sanctions and how it has basically sapped a lot of Russia's ability to wage war, I'd be surprised if this Russia war lasts too long. A congressional report that was published in May mentions that the International Monetary Fund estimates Russia's economy will contract by 8.5% and inflation will reach 24%. This is really unsustainable for Russia over the long term. They really have to wrap things up quickly here. So I think Russia is going to be looking for an exit soon. And that's going to be very positive for the markets, especially if what was mentioned, which is that half of the inflation picture, and I'm not sure how much I believe that, but I think it's reasonable to suspect a considerable amount of the inflationary pressures that economies are feeling are due to the war in Ukraine. Cuts, but it's a lot of it's priced in, then it's just a risk reward question. So I just wanted to share this perspective in case you were feeling exceptionally pessimistic about the markets. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think things are not as gloomy as perhaps people think they are. I maintain my stance that really timing the market is not something that you should attempt to do. Who knows what happens 
just dollar cost average. That's the tried and true method for investing. Obviously, make sure you're not investing any money that you can't afford to lose. If you'd like to join the PIF membership where investors can see what I'm buying and be privy to unique investment insights that are written from the perspective of investors who are trying to build wealth in a halal way. The link to become a PIF member is in the description of this video. Until next time, make sure to take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.